the night. Welcome to Cameron Indoor Stadium here in Durham. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Holly Rowe, and a big one and a good start for Louisville getting a dunk in transition as the freshman David Johnson and the Cardinals off to an early five-point lead. Jim. Well, they're doing it all with defense. Louisville's defense has been excellent. They're taking the ball away from Duke. The last post pass, it was not a good one taken away and knocked away by Malik Williams, who's an excellent defender. Williams, one of the best big guy defenders in the country. Vernon Carey spinning, lost the handle, Louisville ball. Well, Louisville has taken Duke out of everything it wants to do on the offensive end. There's the pass, just a floater from Cassius Stanley, knocked away by Williams because he broke contact and was able to knock it away with that left hand, and David Johnson finishes. Johnson is going to be a big factor, not only this game, but the rest of the season. He is healthy now, and he is able to come in off the bench, run the point. Just dynamic, athletic, and can really see plays. Great factor. How about that feed from Ryan McMahon to the cutting David Johnson in the lead? Bros for Louisville. Just a simple cut by David Johnson off of a post screen, and then he empties out to what they would call the one side. There's nobody else there. You dribble at him, he goes back to our great pressure release. Duke has committed six turnovers already in the game to only two made baskets. All right, take a look at this right here. You're going to see David Johnson. He's going to go back out to the, to the wing, and when he does, there's going to be a dribble at... So dribble at him and he immediately goes back door. And he went back door on a great defender in Trey Jones. That's a big time play. And you know that Chris Mack has wanted that for a pressure release all game long. How about that defense? David Johnson takes the ball away and then fires about a 40 foot pass to Dwayne Sutton. And it's the Cardinals doing some early celebrating here at Cameron. They have just been tougher. Louisville has been magnificent on defense. They've done a great job of just going after the ball, knocking it away, tying it up. And they've just been the tougher basketball team. Duke's got to be stronger with the ball and get better movement on offense. They've been a little bit stagnant. To give Louisville all the credit for that. Knock it away again. Yep. Go inside to carry. Usually works for Duke, but it didn't this time. A terrific dig by David Johnson. Look at Wara moving without the ball, getting the cut, missing the layup, but Malik Williams follows it up for a deuce. Louisville is just quicker to the ball. They're quicker to the cut, and Duke is reacting instead of dictating on either end of the floor. Jones gets inside. Floater won't go. Johnson. Boy, look at that strength. That kid is legit. Last four games, he's starting to play more. He is so gifted, and he can see plays developing. His vision, his understanding of the game is really good for a young player. Had left shoulder surgery back in July. Missed the first four games of the season, but loads of upside in getting more minutes game by game. Matthew Hurt with a much-needed bucket for Duke, and it's a three. Hurt gets that shot off so quickly. It goes from the catch to the shooting pocket and up into a shot so quickly. He doesn't really take a jump shot. It's more of a set shot. Beautiful cut. And another great look, and it's Johnson again. What a start he's had tonight. Just cut right off the ball and peeled off his defender on that little rub, and there's no help side at all. Middle of the floor, help is eliminated. Alex O'Connell into the game, misses the three, and Carey called for going over the bank. What a start for the Cardinals. Again, trying to wa wash away the memory of a to win their season. No, they had a great season, but that was a devastating blow and really difficult mentally to recover from. And don't think they don't remember that coming into this building. They do. You know what? They didn't have that guy last year. And what an incredible first few minutes in the game for David Johnson. Let's get a little bit more on last year's game. Here's Holly again. Well, guys, that loss to Duke was so painful last year, and the way they finished that season that it bred the team motto for this year, which is finish. And they are so proud of the way they are finishing games lately. A three-point win at Notre Dame, a five-point win in overtime at Pitt in their last game. This team feels like they are finally learning how to finish, and that all started with that painful loss to Duke last year. Yeah, they survived those games. But Louisville's capable of much better than they played in the last few, and they are showing it right here. This has been a clinic. I mean, it's 20 to nothing in the paint in this ball game. I mean, they have dominated the paint, getting the ball to the rim on just about every occasion at will on the offensive end. And we have an official review on the last foul call.
trying to get clarification on what exactly it is that the officials are looking at right now. There was a foul called on Louisville right there as Carey got knocked down. And what it is, is was the foul committed before or after Trey Jones began his shooting motion? And the ruling is well it was committed before, so Jones will inbound the ball. Malik Williams getting called for the foul. Duke with just nine points in almost nine minutes of action for a team that averages 83 points per game. Well, a screen for Kathy Stanley. They almost have a lob there. Pretty good pressure on the ball to take it away. Ryan McMahon, the 50-year senior guarding Stanley right now. Boy, good defense there by Johnson staying in front of Jones. Johnson's an athlete and a really long arm. Good D by Williams, but he gets called for the foul. You can see him complaining right away, saying my arms were straight up. What did I do? He thrust his chest into him is what he did. And look, that hasn't been called all year. That's one of the problems in officiating now. But watch how he throws his chest in him. That's a foul. Now, the fact that it hasn't been called in certain games, you know, certainly Malik Williams has got a consistency uh, issue there and say, hey, wait a minute, you haven't been calling this consistently. But that is a foul under any definition that can be called on both ends of every game. Number two on Williams, so he'll sit down and Stephen Enoch back into the game. This is the two-headed monster that Chris Mack has at his disposal at the five spot. Two very different players, but two good players. But Enoch, the better offensive player. Williams, the better defensive player. And Carey, as you mentioned off the top of the show, one of the leading contenders for ACC Player of the Year. And in the conversation, you would imagine, potentially for National Player of the Year. You could say the same about Jordan War of Louisville, who's on the bench right now. Here are the numbers for Vernon Carey Jr. Just having a tremendous season. Great effort there on the lob, but Enoch unable to, to get it to go down. Well, just a terrific job of a screen roll and a hard roll. Ball's loose. Samuel Williamson, freshman for Louisville, comes up with it, and he'll go in and jam it. But Louisville is just stronger going after the ball. Like that was a 50-50 ball, and they're getting all of those in this game. Stanley on the drive, tipped away by McMahon. Another turnover, more transition for Louisville, and it'll be an offensive foul called on Dwayne Sutton, who didn't like to call one bit, as you can see. Trey Jones stepping in to draw the charge. So a real challenge here to the early going for the Blue Devils. They are down 15 on their home court at the midway point of the first half. Louisville, for the most part, packing it in. They're not overextending. Look how much help there is surrounding Vernon Carey, making a pivot it over the top. Good rebound by Sutton. Averaging about nine rebounds per game. He is a, 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 a big-time rebounder. And again, he's 6'5". Goes after every ball, averaging about three offensive rebounds a game, too. Johnson didn't see Jones sneaking up from behind. Well, that's just playing with the ball a little bit too much. Jones, one of the best on-ball defenders in the country. Jones for three. Well short, and it's Louisville ball. Our big Monday matchup this week comes to you from Waco, Oklahoma, taking on the second-ranked team of the nation, the Baylor Bears. You can see it at 9 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Baylor got a scare today in Stillwater, but hung on for the win. Everybody got a scare today. Some teams got more than a scare today. Auburn got blown out at Florida. Butler lost at DePaul. Five of the top ten teams in the rankings, Jay, have lost this week. Two of them have lost twice this week. Yeah, Auburn, a couple of, of big losses, yeah. really, double-digit losses. But you're going to get challenged on the road. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't refer to what happened so much with uh, with Baylor as a scare, but when they got challenged at Oklahoma State, they, they kept their poise. They wound up winning the ball game. Any road game you uh, you get, especially the Big 12, that's a good job. And I really like Baylor's team. They're they're legit. They're ranked second. Duke is ranked third, but remember they lost to Clemson earlier this week. Stanley draws the foul on the drive. Cassius Stanley has been driving more, playing more aggressively. All the numbers are going up for Stanley in recent games. Well, he's a freak athlete, and he can break down the defense. He can also rise up with a mid-range shot. But his last four games, to your point, he's averaging 18 points a game, 
And coming into this one in the last four, 24 of his last 38 from the field. That's pretty efficient. And one of the issues that Duke had at Clemson was Stanley was in foul trouble and missed a, a pretty good chunk of time in the second half. Hurt out, White in for Duke. Kimball out, Perry in for Louisville. Chris Mack has adjusted his rotation, Jay, in the backcourt in the last few games. Mostly because of David Johnson being healthy. So now he can move Darius Perry off the ball where he can be more of a two-guard, still with point guard skills. But now Fresh Kimball and, and Johnson are taking care of the point. That's really been sort of the biggest issue, you could say, for Louisville is, is solidifying the point guard position because they've got basically everything else. Louisville's up 25-12, and their All-America candidate, Jordan Wara, has only two points in this game. That speaks to how well the rest of the Cardinals are playing. Well, they've done it defensively. And Samuel Williamson, the freshman, has been playing much better of late because he's defending better. He hasn't been scoring, but he was able to drop that pass off the war on the back cut, and they picked up a foul on Stanley. And with Joey Baker on a nice bounce pass into Enoch. Can't get it to go. Boy, how physical is that? Well, look at the big run on the floor. Delorier flying down the court, and Enoch standing right with him. Both those guys are really good athletes. Deloria, when he slipped that, uh, when he ball screened and, ran, and rolled, he needs to go down into the post and be a threat. And yet another Duke turnover, 10 of them. 10 turnovers in less than 12 minutes of action. Louisville is just seeing the ball so well. And as passes are being made, they're moving as the ball moves. You know, they play a pack line defense. And it's similar in theory to what Virginia does, but they're not as worried about transition. So Louisville will go to the offensive glass where Virginia doesn't. They want to get back and take you out of transition. Louisville's a little, a little more likely to go after the offensive glass and they'll race you back. But they do such a great job of pressuring the ball, and then their positioning is basically their help. Solid defensive numbers, as you saw there for the Cardinals. Chris Mack in his second year as the head coach at Louisville after a very successful stint with Xavier. McMahon got caught in the air, turns it over. Jones has help. Baker for three. Stanley the rebound. Well, how about Joey Baker running to the three-point line in transition? Used to run to the rim, now you run to the three-point line. <laughs> long shot, long rebound, and that's where catches Stanley was alert. And the loudest this building has been since the opening intros. Perry turns the corner, has it knocked away. Look out, Stanley comes up with the ball, and then he and Perry get tangled up, and now Perry and Baker getting in each other's face. And of all people, the freshman Williamson in comes in to separate them. There's going to be a look at a replay here. There was a lot going on. Standing over a player, the player gets up. Face to face, nose to nose. This one's got some intensity, doesn't it? Up to get the ball, has to come down, straddling over Perry as Perry is lying on the court. Perry took offense. Joey Baker came in and took offense to Perry taking offense. And the end result is Darius Perry and Joey Baker have each been assessed technical fouls. No free throws, offsetting, and the technicals do count as personals. And that's the right, I think that's the right result. You know, you could have, I guess you could have called a foul here on Perry because he wasn't in legal guarding position, uh, two feet on the floor facing the ball handler, but it was just a, a bizarre thing. I mean, if Cassius Stanley had the ball, he's allowed to, well, what's he going to do? Like, he can't really move, he's got the ball. He's going to walk if he move, and he can't tell Darius Perry he can't get up. Now maybe he added a little more into it, but uh, I think it's uh, ultimately the right result. Yep. 11 point lead, Louisville, 7 10 to go here in the first half. Baker, very good shooter from beyond the arc, spins and misses the layup, and Awara comes down for the rebound, and Baker called for the foul, so that'll be his second, because remember the technical that he just picked up counts as a personal as well. Duke ran a little horn set with two guys on the elbows, two guys in the corner, and then they faded off the top. And when Joey Baker got the ball, he drove in and spun. I don't think he realized how open he was. He could have gone right to the rim off that. Instead, he sort of faded away. And 
Baker's got to come out of the game. With the ball right now for Louisville, a guy we've been talking about, David Johnson, a freshman from Trinity High in Louisville, won a state title last year, and he has been great for the moment he entered the game. And look at that kick to Perry in the corner for three. And Perry looking back at the camera, and Crazy's on his way back down the court. How about that find by David Johnson? He is a next-level passer. Great vision. Meanwhile, it is so noisy in this place, as it always is. If you want to call out some plays, you can't yell them. you got to write them on the whiteboard. Well, it might just be that that was Mike Pegues' favorite team, <laughs> the Spurs. A lot of teams will do that, but what a great play by David Johnson, finding Darius Perry on the other side of the floor. Well, Johnson adds such a, a great dimension to this team. If, if Louisville had him all season long, I mean, he missed debate about three or four months with that shoulder during the summer, basically missed the entire summer. And remember, this Louisville team was ranked by many preseason. I think they came into the season ranked second, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right up at the top. Right? And they went to, they're one of the many programs that ascended to number one. They're number 11 right now. They've got three losses. But there is loads of talent on this Louisville team. And depth. You know, they've got everything they need. And now with David Johnson coming in to help solidify the point, Makes him even better. Oh, good pass. Got one to walk on Warren. And I'll get an offensive foul call eventually on Warren. Uh, Gaffney saying that Warren grabbed with his off arm as he was dribbling in. If that, went, if that went against Jordan Wara, that's not a good call. He didn't grab anybody. Let's see, what's he going to do? Like, tuck his arm into his shorts? First foul on Wara. That guy had some really good minutes for Duke in the loss at Clemson on Tuesday night. He has started to shoot the ball better. Remember, he had that long slump. Oh, shooting 28. last year. He's yeah, over but, 28. But he's now shooting at a better rate this year, and he's still doing all the other Jack White things that he brings to the table. The last couple games, Jack White's averaging 10 points and five and a half rebounds, and he's hit four of his last six from three coming into this game. Jones can't get it to carry. Now Stanley for three. Wow. That's a heck of a shot by Casher Stanley. He got that up quick. He was ready to shoot when the ball got into his hands. And man, if you press up on him, he's so athletic, he can go by in a heartbeat. Malik Williams thought about the three, steps in, takes the 15-footer, too strong. And Wara with a silly foul. Number two on the best player that Louisville has. They didn't need that right now. Now Chris Mack has got to make a decision. Yeah, there was no reason for Jordan Wara. There was no way he was going to get that ball. And he's telling Chris Mack, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. But... Well, that ball was coming right to Cassius Stanley. He went after it with one hand. And you like the fact that he's aggressive, but you have to be smart in that in that instance. Now, this is potentially one of these markdown time and score moments. 5.35 to go. Louisville by nine. Wara pleading his case to stay in the game, but he's going to lose the argument. Samuel Williamson, you can see, is sitting at the score seat. Well, Cassius Stanley's done a really good job on Jordan Moore had to let him get the ball with his athleticism and you know, we talked about a little bit earlier you know oftentimes when you put a smaller player on Jordan Moore you can get up underneath him a little bit and be a little bit more disruptive than if you match him size for size Moore is a terrific player but that's just one he wishes he could have back whether it was frustration because of the prior foul that was called on him who knows but that's potentially a big blow for Louisville here in the last five minutes and change of the first half. Louisville is not running any offense right now. He didn't make a pass on that play. Johnson took it on his own. Perry, money in there. Well, Chris Mack's going to want a timeout here. Well, Duke has really hung in there and done it defensively. And give a ton of credit to Cassius Stanley and the way he has performed at both ends of the floor.
And when they really need a bucket, Jay, play number one of the Duke playbook this year usually is get the ball into Vernon Carey Jr. So sets a little screen up top, and then he can get into the low post from the high post. And you really have to jump to the ball there. Malik Williams did not do quite as good a job of that, so he couldn't deny him the ball. The left-hander just off the glass and got it to go. And maybe that'll get Vernon Carey going a little bit. Got the praises going, that's for sure. Coming up tonight, 8.30 Eastern time on ABC and the ESPN app. How about this matchup out of the NBA? LeBron and the Lakers, the Beard and the Rockets in our NBA Saturday primetime matchup. I cannot believe that LeBron is like, what, 35, 36 years old? It's amazing. 17th year in the NBA. Look at the numbers, 25, 8, and 11 roughly. And oh, yeah, James Harden. 37 points per game. Louisville needs to run some offense here. So much of what they've had has come off their defense. And they're going to have to run good half-court offense in order to win this game. And they're going to have to do it without Jordan War for the next one. Sutton and Kitt. Perry. Johnson for three, and the freshman does it again. Much better. The ball moved from side to side once they got into the paint, kicked it out, drove, and then kicked it to an open shooter. Very effective execution out of the timeout. A handoff from White to Jones, and he's fouled. Now take a look at the initial drive. Initial drive by Sutton. He kicks it, and then another drive. Into basically two paint touches in a row in order to get it to David Johnson, who is ready to shoot when the ball arrived. That was much better offense out of the timeout than Louisville had ran the last several times down when they've had half-court offense. Johnson and IJ, 6 of 7 from the floor, 13 points, 3 assists already for a guy who's a freshman, as we mentioned, playing in this environment for the first time. Where would they be without the performance of David Johnson? He came in the, after the pit game, he had 11 points, 4 assists in that one. He's, he's got such great bounce, super athletic length. David Johnson's grandfather is a, a security guard at the Young Center. So he gets to watch, gets to watch him all the time. Basketball. That's pretty cool. Out of bounds, back to Duke. One of the issues for Louisville is when Jordan Moore is not scoring, what players are going to step forward? And they've got to get consistent production from other players. How about this? Over the top to Stanley, and Johnson came down and credited with a block. Well, it looked like he got hit, but a great play. That was just a simple post out of the corner. Well, about the only thing that David Johnson hadn't yet done in this game is block a shot, and he just went up there against one of the best athletes in college basketball and disrupted the Stanley dunk attempt. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Car Hop Classic, only at Sun. All right, LaFonzo, let's hit first. First game day at Duke. What did you think so far? It was absolutely awesome. I had the privilege of playing it here when I was in college, so a lot of memories. And this crowd is as electric as it was when I was in school. All right, Seth, what's the story of this game so far? In your mind. David Johnson, he's been absolutely Let's terrific. Go, His size, and he's given Louisville a toughness that I think Chris Mack's been looking for. He's been terrific. All right, you'll see these guys at the half. All right, thank you, Holly. Guys, looking forward to it. Reese Davis, of course, will anchor the halftime show. Do you think, Jay, as long as Louisville is leading, playing well, that Chris Mack is going to try to leave Jordan Wara on the bench for the rest of the first half? Yeah, probably. Uh, I don't know that he has a policy when you get two fouls, you get taken out for the rest of the half, because... I think you wind up, if you, if you do that, you wind up playing the best defense you can on your best player by keeping him on the bench. But I don't think there's any reason if they can you know, continue to play well. The question is mismatches. I mean, the last time down when Duke had the ball, you know, they went right to Cassius Stanley. They ran a little horn set, Stanley in the corner, and they got the ball into the high post, just played high-low. He came in and posted Ryan McMahon. And that's an advantage for Duke. So I think you're going to see both both coaches go at whatever mismatch they may have. Lake Williams, a junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, is at the line for Louisville. We've talked a lot about Johnson, the freshman, and how well he's played tonight. But other than him and Williamson, this is a very old team. 
and old in a good way. Three fifth-year seniors, a grad transfer, a couple of juniors, a lot of experience for Louisville. And Darius Perry has gone out on Captain Stanley. That's a little more athletic matchup on him. Perry over Williams in the follow for Hurt. Well, how about Matthew Hurt? That was with the left hand. And nobody put a body on him. They just decided they're going to jump for the rebound. And Hurt jumped higher. What a play. Perry off the screen. Stanley giving chase. Perry. Tipped up, but no good for Williams. And right down to the board for Duke. Duke icing that side ball screen. Keeping it to the left side. Not getting it back to the other side. White steps into a three. Not there. And tipped down to Louisville. 2.50 to go. First half. Cardinals have led most of the way. Johnson sees a hole. Nice kick. Perry passed up the three, though. Now he's in trouble. Good cut by Williamson, and he's got it blocked. No, a foul call going on Jack White. And Louisville has not been able to get much at all the last 10, 12 minutes in transition. It's all been in the half court. See, Matthew Hurt right here. He's going to come all the way from the perimeter, and nobody even turns. And he goes right over a great rebounder in Dwayne Sutton because nobody turned to box out. They all wanted to jump for that rebound. Just a terrific job by Matthew Hurd. Subs now for Duke. DeLaurier, Baker back in. Carey and White come out. That was the second foul on White. Samuel Williamson really bailed out. Darius Perry on the baseline with that cut. One of two. Williamson's a talented young player. He hasn't been playing as much of late because of defense, but his defense is starting to improve. Baseline drive, Stanley. And scores over Malik Williams. Went right into his chest and still kept his eyes on the rim. Cassius Stanley is having a great game at both ends. Duke's got 27, Jay. He's got 12 of them. He has played outstanding defense. One when he's been on Jordan Moore, but just overall, he's been a big factor on the offensive end. Johnson. Williams. Here comes the help. And Williams still scores. He kept poise in the post when he could have traveled. That was a terrific job. Couldn't even drop step because he picked up his dribble already. That was your poise in the post back in the day. Well, I never got the ball. <laughs> you can have poise without the ball. Yeah, well, nobody right. notices. And had a lot of poise. <laughs> I was poisoned in the post. <laughs> Stanley with Perry on him now. Jones, still plenty of time. Can't get the shot on. Stanley's got to make something happen. And out to Johnson. Boy, is he in attack mode tonight? And he draws the foul. It'll be on Joey Baker. I think that was the right call. It was just a late call. Well, most people don't like late calls. I don't like me, but I, I think I'd rather have the call late till you wait and see what happened. They caught him with the body, and Joey Baker was never in legal guarding position there, and he hit him with his body. That that is a foul. That was a good call. But and you made the point earlier tonight, and we talked about it during the Memphis game a couple of nights ago as well that we did. Players are being coached constantly now. Keep your arms straight up in the air. But oftentimes they're doing that, but there is still contact down below that you feel is a foul. Well, that was clearly a foul. Yeah. And but what I was talking about is is I'm seeing practices all over the country where coaches are teaching their players foul the player with your chest, go in with your arms up and throw your throw your chest into the offensive player. And they're doing that because the officials aren't calling this. And so it's just smart by the coaches to do it. And until the officials start calling it, we're going to see more and more of that. But that that's a foul. Always has been a foul. And it's just a question of whether it gets called. That's the third on Baker. He has gone to the bench. Goldwire back in for the Blue Devils. Hurt behind the back. Hurt driving. Knocked out of bounds. Duke ball. And now the Crazies are not happy with the whistle lately. So they wanted a foul call on Louisville on that play. And Matthew Hurt doesn't really take a, a jump shot where he reaches a high apex on the jump. He gets it off a little like Larry Bird used to. Reach and foul on Williamson. You mean high above his head? High, well, high, high above release. his head, yeah. but he, you know, on his jump shot, he, he might only be a couple inches off the ground, but he gets it off so quickly. Now watch Larry Bird. You call that a jump shot. How high did he jump? 
And same thing for Matthew Hurt. He barely gets off the ground, but he shoots it so quickly, it's hard for defenders to recover from. I mean, I think it's very, very similar the way these two shoot the ball. Now, I'm not saying they're the same player. Uh, that, that's not, it's just they shoot the ball similarly. Stanley at the line. And he's keeping Duke in it right now. He's really blossoming as a player. Not that he hasn't played well throughout the year. He has. But he's, he's turning into a star caliber performer. With that athleticism and the fact that he's a two-way player, he plays at both ends of the floor. Where they're getting out on Ryan McMahon in a hurry. Of course, everybody knows the scouting report and the fifth-year senior from Sarasota. You can't give him any space because if he gets that shot off, there's a pretty good chance it's going in. He has to be forced to drive, McMahon. And when he's forced to drive, you have to force him to finish. So you don't want to help off on him and let him pass it. Make him finish a tough two. Johnson, the story for Louisville in the first half, and it continues. He's just longer and bigger than Trey Jones, who stayed in front of him. Johnson was just able to shoot it over him. 17 in the first half for, De for Johnson, the freshman. Heard it the other end, bangs down a three. How high did he get off the floor? It doesn't matter. <laughs> he still shoots it on the way up, but he's just got a beautiful stroke. Louisville can hold for the final shot of the half. They were up nine when Wara went to the bench with his second foul with about five and a half minutes to go. So they have weathered that storm. Johnson wants to take this on his own. They're going to double team. Yeah, force it out of his hands. Williams for three. Johnson the assist. And the Cardinals will take a ten-point lead into halftime here at Cameron. Just the fourth three-pointer on the year for Malik Williams. He was known for that coming in, but has not shot the ball well. Really great shot and great pass by Johnson out of the double. And what a good 20 minutes for Louisville here in hostile territory. Chris Mack is with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, you went to the bench early and brought David Johnson in. Why did you know that he was going to make this kind of an impact? Because he's, really, he's a really good player, Holly. I mean, obviously, being out four months with a torn labrum set him back. But four minutes of the second half are going to go a long way as well. That was tonight's game track presented by Booking.com. Down to court level, here's Holly Rowe. Assistant coach for Duke, John Shire, said they are trying to get Vernon Carey more touches and get him more involved. But that ball pressure and the disruption from Louisville is making it difficult. Louisville charts their deflections. They had five in the first half. So he said, we just have to be stronger with the ball. We've given them 15 points off of turnovers. That's the important thing we've got to do here in the second half. All right, Holly, thank you. We are ready for the start of the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster. And Duke with the first possession of the half. Stanley in and out. Duke ran a little ball screen action. Ball screen slipped with Hurt and a ball screen by Vernon Carey. Natasha Stanley is such a good player. So Jack White on Jordan Wara. White starting the second half in the place of Jordan Goldwire, who started the game. Enoch too strong. Rebound Perry. Jones one on one with Kimball gets by him and lays it in. A little, a little casual getting back in transition. They had four guys back, but they weren't back sprinting to try to stop the ball. First points of the night for Jones, who averages 15 a game. A little replace action. Take a look here at Duke in transition after the jump hook miss by Stephen Enoch. Not a lot of urgency to get back and protect the lane. And Trey Jones looked like a running back taking it through the line as he got all the way to the basket and laid it in off the glass. It's a great attack in transition by Trey Jones. War, as you mentioned, only two points in the first half, but yet Louisville still leads. And by the way, that foul on Vernon Carey Jr. Just want to keep an eye on That's number three on him. Stanley elevating again. On the first half, Louisville dominated points in the paint. And in two possessions, Louisville's given up two layups. I guess the second one is a dunk, but you get the idea. Would you say 46-inch vertical leap? Yeah, that may, be, that may be low. Loose ball, Carey. Keeps the dribble alive and draws the foul. There's Dwayne Sutton throwing his chest into Vernon Carey. The same thing we talked about before. Hands were up, fouled him with his chest. 
And Louisville giving up easy baskets in transition, easy opportunities in transition. And right now, the momentum has been seized in the first couple minutes of this second half by Duke. You can just feel it. And again, what's at stake? Each of these teams is 5-1 and one in ACC play. The Florida State Seminoles, who overcame a late deficit, won in overtime down in Coral Gables today against Miami. So Florida State will be tied with whoever wins this game. Syracuse sneaking up into the picture now. Got another road win today at Virginia Tech. NC State beat Clemson. So there's a three-way tie for fourth right now. The ACC, like every league in America, it seems, chaotic and hard to predict. After the made free throw, Duke going 1-2-1-1, one, 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 trapping and getting a turnover. Bad play there by Perry. Pass deflected and stolen. Hurts. Stanley off the knee of Perry. Duke ball. Well, this looks like a complete reversal from the first half. Catches Stanley quicker to the ball than Darius Perry and able to throw it off of Louisville to maintain possession. A 6-0 run for Duke to start the second half. Tipped ball down to Dwayne Sutton. See if Louisville can get the ball to Warren. Being guarded by Jack White. He's got to start putting some points on the board. Amber Carey's got three fouls, and Enoch will spin right around him. What a beautiful pivoting in the post to get around to the other side of the bucket to avoid the shot block. You want to see them go inside as much as they can because Carey's got three? Yeah, I mean, they did get the ball in the paint, but they also need to stop Louisville, or excuse me, stop Duke from getting the ball into the painted area. Duke has dominated the paint in this second half. And Cassius Stanley is pretty much unstoppable right now. Chris Mack wants a timeout. Flute to get the ball all the way to the rim. They've done it in transition. Chris Mack cannot be happy with his team's transition defense. And Cassius Stanley has just been magnificent at both ends of the floor all game long. 18 points, 8 rebounds thus far in the ball game. And he is riding a high. He's averaging 18 over his last five games now, including this one, and shooting an ungodly percentage from the field. He is emerging as an absolute star on this team. And Duke's got as many paint points in the second half, eight, as they had the entire first half. And they're back within four. It's really time for Jordan Ward to step forward, get more aggressive on the offensive end. He's being hounded by Jack White. White knocked it away. Wara got it back. And a foul on Matthew Hurt. Did pick up a foul there, but I don't think Mike Krzyzewski is too upset with that, given that they are not really letting Louisville run any half-court offense. And really, in the first half, the difference in the ball game was Louisville's transition points, and also David Johnson <laughs> and making individual plays. Really, and there's Johnson, the freshman, did not start the game, did not start the second half, but 17 points, four assists, a couple of blocks, and a steal in the first half of the Cardinals. Stephen Enoch needs to roll hard to the basket when he sets the screen. Another three by a Louisville big guy. Malik Williams hit one to end the first half. Now Stephen Enoch. And Louisville has not missed a three in this game. They are five for five from beyond the arc. But one thing they haven't done, they're not really getting to the free throw line very often. White to Stanley. And Louisville ball. Delorier fortunate not to get called for a foul there. Wara behind the back in traffic. And the follow will go for Fresh Kimball. Great play by Kimball to stick with it. I thought Wara got fouled going up for that. But how about going behind the back in transition between defenders? Need to get that shot up. And all of a sudden, the lead, which had been down to four, is back up to nine for the visitors. And that was a, a good answer out of the timeout because... Louisville did not come out as tough in the second half as it did in the first. Jones, tough contested shot, will go. And what a difference in his offensive game. He really worked on that shot. Last year shot about 25, 26% from three. This year, 36% from three. And he has become much more of a reliable scorer. And has increased his scoring by about five and a half points per game. Johnson too strong. White the save, but he saves it to Kimball. Shot clock did reset. Now, wait a minute. John Gaffney, 
the official blows his whistle, and I think the discussion will be whether there had been a change. Breaking Bad, your first concert. The first concert was Forecastle, uh, Louisville. And who played in Forecastle? Uh, the main people I saw were probably Playboy Cardi and uh, Jack Harlow. Your favorite toy as a kid? Uh, my PlayStation 3. And your favorite breakfast cereal? Uh, Fruity Pebbles. How about your first celebrity uh, crush? Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Mm, pretty good. Jordan Wara, the end is silent, but he's not. 94 feet. Some solid answers there for a tremendous player. Look at the transformation of Jordan Wara from year to year. A huge, huge leap forward last year in his sophomore season. And has his game continued to grow? Jay, in your mind, it was junior year. There's no question. I mean, he is a great college player, but he has been held in check in this one. You know, Cassius Stanley guarded him in the first half and wouldn't let him breathe, wouldn't let him get the ball. And in the second half, just, he just turned the ball over on a little horn set. Yeah. This is the three. I just hope if you were to do 94 feet with a war in about 20 years, that the answer to your favorite cereal would still be fruity. Isn't that, that great? Then I could really respect it. That should be a lifelong. Thing. What's your favorite series? Okay. No, Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. What about you? Captain Trump. Oh, I knew that. Actually. Now we'll send Wayne Sutton to the line. You know, the last possession, Jordan War was able to get a three opportunity in transition. But because of the way the first half went, you know, he hasn't established any rhythm at all. And, and that's because of, I think, the great defense played on him by Cassius Stanley in the first half. You know, basketball, and I've said this before, basketball is about rhythm. It's about establishing yours and disrupting theirs. And Jordan Mora hasn't been able to establish any rhythm in this ball game because Duke has disrupted his rhythm. And it's been just a great defensive job starting off by Cassius Stanley. Be interesting now, Jack White has come out. Stanley is not in the game, so I would imagine we'll see Matthew Hurt potentially on Jordan Wara, and we'll see how that matchup goes. Well, the other option is to put Jordan Goldwire on the get up under him. Yeah, yeah. Goldwire is long, and uh, in athletics, keep the ball away from him. Jones into traffic. It stays with Duke. A couple of the players in the game right now for Duke, each with three fouls. Joey Baker, one of them, and more significantly, Vernon Perry Jr., who picked up his third a minute into the second half. Duke in a box set here on out of bounds under. Oftentimes they'll run three across, uh, and they run a ton of their plays out of the same alignment, which makes it difficult for you to know what's coming. Good position for Perry. That sets a yeah. throw in his chest. He fouled him with his chest again. He knocked the foul. I don't think it had anything to do with where his arms was. That was a chest foul. See, as the ball comes off, an, an immediate duck in. And right, right with Enoch having his chest. And you could say there was some offense-initiated contact, but the defense is going to take that foul nine times out of ten. And it's number three on Enoch. We heard Chris Mack say to Holly Rowe in the interview going off the court at halftime, both of our big guys got two. Well, one of them just picked up his third. Enoch sits. The good news, though, is it's a pretty good player coming in off the bench in Malik Williams. You know, that duck in into the post by Vernon Carey, that's where you have to as a defender do your work early. Great contact to be able to get around in front. Otherwise, you get locked down. Uh, offensive players in the post want contact. Defensive players can't allow the contact because they are going to get just locked into the post. And he can't move. Sutton guarded by Hurt goes right at him and lays it in. And that's exactly what Louisville needs to do. Find the matchup they can attack, and it was Matthew Hurt on Dwayne Sutton go after it. We talked about it in the Clemson game this week. Hurt had Kevin Mack on him, and Mack made life very difficult for Hurt, whose minutes were really limited because of it, and we'll see if Louisville keeps attacking Hurt right now. Well, Trey Jones just attacked Fresh Kimball, who's just not quite as big. You want to see War in the post since Goldwire's on? He could certainly do that, but this is what they want to do. They're just trying to get the ball to, to Dwayne Sutton and let him attack Matthew Hurt. So it was less about getting the ball to War right yeah. now and going after the matchup they want, and that's Matthew Hurt. As long as Hurt stays on Sutton, I think Chris Mack's going to keep going to Sutton. And Jay, because Carey had to come over and help, he picked up the foul. That is his fourth a significant development to say the least and that's where 
even though you want to contest that shot, you have to be smart. You can get a bucket back, you cannot get a foul back. And the best, the best defender in the world is the bench. Well, Duke going with a smaller lineup. They're going to have Jack White basically at the five. Williams, a guy who spends some time on the perimeter offensively. So I'm sure you'll see Cassius Stanley back on Jordan Ora. They can go a couple different ways with Stanley or Goldwire on it. Kirk has come out of the game as well. Baker thought about it. Stumbles as he passes over to Jones. Wide open, Stanley. Goldwire on the Baker. That lost it. Stanley fouled by Johnson. Oh, that was a spectacular pass by Goldwire to Joey Baker for the wide open three. You know, they, all of these rebounds and loose balls that Duke is getting in the second half, those were the balls that Louisville was getting in the first half. It's been like a complete reversal in that play. Duke, which has struggled with free throws in recent games. As a team, they're doing a better job tonight. 13 for 18. 15 for 19. They're getting the right guys to the free throw line, too. Marshall Stanley shoots about 70%. But with his athleticism, he should live at the free throw line. He's now 9 for 10 from the line on the night. There's this 1 2 2 three quarter court pressure. Quick fake. Wara for three. 44% from beyond the arc on the season. But he continues to struggle to put points up here tonight. It's a rhythm thing, I believe. He hasn't seen the ball go through the basket except before the game and at halftime. He is completely out of rhythm. Kentucky did this to him with the play of Emmanuel quickly. They just took him totally out of the game. Stanley the offensive rebound and another Louisville foul. The long shots have led to long rebounds. That has made blockouts really difficult. Try laying a body on Cassius Stanley 15 feet from the basket. This shot was a long board, and Dwayne Sutton was right with Cassius Stanley to start, but he went toward the basket instead of maintaining contact with him. Nice look ahead. Sutton and Wara will get an easy one. Well, that was a terrific pass ahead. Duke in position to foul there, and that might have been the smarter play. Stanley, by the way, Jay, 20 and 10 with better than 12 minutes left in the game. He's been magnificent. I mean, he has been the star of this game. Kimball with a block and comes up with a loose ball. Terrific defense by Fresh Kimball. Now an advantage situation. Johnson rejected by Baker. Goldwire back to Baker for three. And the ball hit the shot clock, so that'll turn it back over to the Cardinals. All right, and that's how the game has changed. Instead of running to the rim, running to the three-point line. And this has been every bit the Sonic, mostly because I've been watching Yellowstone and anything cowboy I'm going with. It's fair. Based in that's, sound that's reasoning solid right theory. There. That's, that's right. solid. That's solid. 10 o'clock Eastern knowledge. time tonight on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. You want to roll with your predictions, right? Mean lately. <laughs> you know, I only said that because I knew you were going to respond. That way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Louisville with the ball and a nine point lead. These two teams both five and one in the conference. Cardinals ranked 11, Duke third. Cassius Stanley back on Jordan Wara. Warren's got to start moving without the ball. He's just standing. Matthew Hurt guarding Samuel Williamson, and Williamson got called for using the left arm to knock the defender away. Yeah, they immediately went after Matthew Hurt again, but used that left arm to discard. Wasn't a ton of contact, but enough to draw the offensive foul. If you're just joining us, Cassius Stanley's been sensational for Duke. David Johnson, the freshman for Louisville, and Vernon Carey Jr.'s on the bench with four fouls. Johnson guarding Stanley right now. Those are two spectacular athletes on one another. Jones left hand, too strong. Look out, and Williamson got casual with the ball, and a timeout called by Goldwire. Williamson had no idea that Goldwire was sneaking up behind him. 
Well, Jordan Goldwire is second to Trey Jones and steals on this team. That 29 steals coming in. You bring the ball down, that lets the little guys hang around. Nine point lead for the Cardinals, and when Louisville's been doing well offensively, Jay, a lot of it has been their defense creating transition opportunities. Especially to start the game, their transition opportunities were all off their defense, off Duke's 10 turnovers in the first eight minutes. And in the second half, that's been a good deal of the offense as well. A couple opportunities in transition. That's the scoring Jordan Wara had in that dunk that he had in this half. And really got Louisville off nice to that great start. And there was the look ahead you were just talking about in the second half that got Jordan Wara that bucket. And here we are up in the crow's nest, a unique spot. Where's that camera? There's a closer camera right there. They call that the snoop cam, so that they can snoop on us uh, whenever we want. This is our perspective. We're right at about the three-point line. There's the uh, the ball dome cam, Doug Holmes' favorite, because as you know, Doug has the hair of a thousand men. Beautiful out-of-bounds play run by Duke. A little pin in by Jack White to get Matthew Hurt wide open. He just pins in. It's almost like a fade screen, and Matthew Hurt that, you, that couldn't have been any more in and come out. Third on Jordan Wara at the line, Jack White. Well, Rubel just not alert on that. You've either got to get over the top of that or switch it. And Matthew Hurt could not have been more open. White with his first point of the game. Ryan McMahon will check in for Fresh Kimball. Still a ton of time left in this game. Duke was down 10 at halftime, got it down to four a few minutes ago. Louisville up by seven right now. Trey Jones with defense on the ball on Johnson trying to get him to turn his back. Another turnover. Jones ahead to Stanley. Oh, what a great steal by Jack White. Stanley with a block from behind, but Williamson with a reverse. Boy, that's a crazy, impressive five seconds for Cassius Stanley. Uh, Louisville doing a good job of getting the ball up court quickly to attack. They try to play a little bit ahead of Duke's defense. White fades to the corner, thinking about the three. Still plenty of time of the shot clock for the Blue Devils. Jones, line drive short. How about Goldwire with the offensive rebound? After Jack White knocked that ball away on a David Johnson pass, it's a terrific, terrific deflection. And this young man has springs. That's an extra step on the ladder that the rest of us humans don't have. <laughs> His teammates as excited about it as the fans are. Stanley with 22 on the night. Samuel Williamson just picked up his fourth. He's gone to the bench. Dwayne Sutton returns for the Cardinals. Tip no good. And Sutton, that's how you wrap up a rebound. That's what Williamson did do earlier when Goldwire took it away from him. Duke finding its way to the free throw line. That's been a big difference in the game to keep Duke within striking distance. Johnson driving on White. Left hand, no. Sutton, no. Long rebound to the Blue Devils. They get a chance to run. I'm well, surprised that Sutton didn't drive that ball from the corner. Good pass. Hurts. Lays it in. Good patience in the paint. Down to five. The Louisville's got to show some poise against Duke's pressure to get the shot that they want. You can count on one hand in the second half that they've gotten the shot they want. Another, another tough one. Yeah, very tough three there for Warren. And it's Stanley again. Well, Louisville needs a timeout here. making another run and Cassius Stanley continues to be the headliner. Well, it has been Duke's defense that has gotten Stanley out in transition for those 
just spectacular finishes. Another pass ahead. David Johnson can't get a hand on it. And Stanley... where the students are sitting and this is our guy in the seat Owen Henry a sophomore from Holly Springs North Carolina a statistical science major and helping us out doing a little fan cam work the question right now is how is Louisville going to respond to Duke's pressure are they going to get the shot they want Enoch's back in got a size advantage on Jack White Stanley back on Warren does he not get a touch? Here it is. And he threw it away. Felt the double team, but Jones anticipated it. Hurt knew he was going to get fouled. Will it be in the act of shooting? Yes, it, it will. And he get three. This is starting to become an issue of poise. Because Stephen Enoch did not need. That's a three. That's a three. When he got fouled and went up, his right foot was behind that blue line. So three free throws coming for Hurt. He's a 75% free throw shooter on the season. And Matthew Hurt needed this game. He'd been struggling the last couple of games. The scoreboard here says that is the fifth foul on Sutton, but it is not. We believe it is the fourth foul on Dwayne Sutton. And after one more free throw, we'll find out if he's coming out of the game because David Johnson's getting ready to check back in. Well, I think you have to take him out. Yeah. Here comes Johnson, and it is indeed for Sutton. So Sutton out with four right now. Carey still on the bench with four for Duke. And the Blue Devils on the verge, potentially, of tying this game for the first time since it was 5-5. Sometimes, when you're in Louisville's position, you've been nursing a lead for quite some time. Giving up that lead can kind of jolt you back into aggressiveness. Wara still being covered by Stanley. And Jordan Wara, who averages 20, just four points tonight. Kimball, little stop and go, and Louisville back on top. Boy, what a play by Fresh Kimball. Little ball screen and roll by Stephen Enoch, and then Jordan Wara was replacing up from the opposite side, and Kimball was able to just give a little juke move and get around Jack White. And he probably could have laid that ball off to Enoch if he needed to, because Cassius Stanley had to stay with Jordan Wara. He's such a good shooter. You got to stay with him. The grad transfer from St. Joe's. And very well in the Kentucky game, has been starting ever since. Probably a little bit in his last four shooting leads. 8 of 27 from the field coming into this one. He was a three time captain at St. Joe's. And St. Joe's has a, a rich basketball tradition. He's the first ever three time captain.
David Johnson to stay in front. Schmidt blocked by Williams. And Williamson gives it up to Johnson. Wide open is Kimball. Heck of a block out by Matthew Hurt on Malik Williams. He was right there to tip it in. And Hurt just blocked him away from it. What a move. Jones, left hand, no. Surprised there wasn't a foul there. A lot of body contact. Warren, Hurt chasing, and Warren slams it home. He better be strong going to the bucket. Warren now with six. And Louisville up by five. Ooh, all all Warren's baskets have come in transition. If he's not ahead of the crowd, he hasn't gotten anything in this one. Good face. He didn't call that body contact foul. I mean, Malik Williams hit him. It'll be Duke ball when we come back. Louisville's still leading, but Duke has made a run at them here in the second half. Oh, baby, it is getting loud and it is getting fun. Favorite Cameron Indoor Stadium and Cassius Stanley practically reaching the Raptors on some of his dunks tonight. The Jordan Wara and the Cardinals looking to hang on for a big road victory. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block, where you know the price before you begin. And Baylor's in Gainesville game day will come to you from Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence. What a triple header. And a big 12 SEC challenge. That Florida Baylor game, Florida's starting to play much, much better. That's a team yep. that should be ranked in the top 10 based upon their personnel. Florida blew out of Auburn today. Back into the game with four fouls is Vernon Carey Jr. Didn't make, take him long to make an impact. Vernon Carey did a terrific job of faking into the middle, then a drop step to the baseline side. And he did that against an excellent defender, Malik Williams. That was just a big time move when he came back into the ballgame. David Johnson, by the way, has not scored in the second half after putting up 17 in the first half. And the pressure on their half court defense has been, for the most part, excellent in the second half. Kimball with a floater, too strong. And Williams misses the follow. A break there for the Blue Devils. A huge break because Vernon Carey did not want to foul there. And Malik Williams missed perhaps the easiest shot he'll get. Now watch this post play. So a little move into the middle and then to the baseline side, just a drop step spin. Just a beautiful post move by Vernon Carey. Doesn't played all that much because of the foul trouble. Now with the double figures. Carey again, immediate double team. Screen from Tasha Stanley to get him in the low post. Jones buries a three and it's tied it in. What a difference a year and a ton of work on your shot makes for Trey Jones. He has really worked on that shot and it's evident the difference between last year and this. And Terry Jones stepping up large for the Blue Devils here in the second half. Open is Kimball. Down a three. A step back going against Matthew Hurd, who's 6'9. Just backed him up, took that step back, and was able to get it off before Hurt could recover with those long arms. A high low look. Perry over the double team. Rebound Warren. Well, there was a lot of contact on that, but a good job to come over from the help side. Vernon Carey does not stop posting up. He's got Wara out of the perimeter right now. Wara's going to go by him, and it won't stay down. There's two layups. First Malik Williams and Jordan Wara. Jones for the lead. Carey with a one-handed rebound and put back. What a reversal. An easy two for Louisville. They miss, and then Duke scores on the other end. So Duke down by one. They tied it a couple of times here in the second half. They haven't led since it was 5-2. to two. Goldwire doing a good job on Johnson. Patrick Stanley still on Jordan Moore. Williamson getting some crunch time minutes for Louisville and a foul on Hurt. Louisville will not get two easier shots all year. First it was Malik Williams and then Jordan Moore. It looked like he hit that little rim first and it bounced out. And then Samuel Williamson has very little shot of blocking out Vernon Carey here. And even with four fouls, Carey goes hard to the offensive glass. 
Out of bounds underneath now for Louisville. They're going four across the baseline. A lot of times they'll just pop a player out to the elbow, Jordan Moore, and then go from there and get a full screen. There it is. And Chris Max brought Ryan and McMahon back into the game. He doesn't have a point yet. He does now. Well, he just popped out after the switch. He just popped out at Vernon Carey on him. Carey couldn't get out there. Beautiful play out of bounds under by Louisville. And what a timely substitution for Chris Mack. Stanley with 24. Oh, and Hurt wasn't looking, and the pass sails out of bounds. Jordan Wara pops out and gets a screen. And then after the switch, a terrific job of just backing out to the three-point line by Ryan McMahon. And he had time to set his feet. Vernon Carey not often is guarding a small guy that does that. Oh, Johnson with a two-handed slam for his first point of the second half. Cassius Stanley is not the only one that plays above the rim. What a revelation David Johnson has been. I mean, you knew he was really good at a ton of potential. But he, he's, a, he's a star. Carey in the paint. Ooh, Johnson reached in, called for the foul. This is a big-time finish by David Johnson. Dribbling in with the left hand. Goes up off two feet. He's got length. He's got athleticism. That's big-time bounce. Man. 6-5-2-10. Play in the point. Teammates are loving it. If I had hair like that, I'd be rubbing it all day, too. One of our big Monday matchups, the Big 12 game at 9 o'clock Eastern time, takes you to Waco, Oklahoma, taking on Baylor, 9 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. The Bears have beat the Sooners the last three times they've met. The early game, 7 o'clock Eastern, ACC big Monday game. It'll be the Wolfpack of NC State in Charlottesville taking on the defending national champion of Virginia Cavaliers. You'll be there with Mr. McDonough. Yes, I just saw, I just saw Oklahoma play on Tuesday and it was amazing they played Kansas and Yudoka Azubuki wound up guarding Christian Doolittle and what an amazing transformation he's had going from like 275 280 down to 255 he's guarding Doolittle out on the perimeter inside uh, just a terrific job by Yudoka Azubuki four minutes to go Louisville with a six-point lead the horn set Baker trying to stay with Kimball. Defended by Delorier, but Delorier out of bounds when he had the ball. So it'll be part of the ball when we come back. College basketball reaction. Lakers and Rockets tonight. UFC 246. Previewing tomorrow's games between the Titans and the Chiefs and the 49ers and the Green Bay Packers on the eve of the conference title games. And Louisville turns the ball over on out of bounds underneath. They tried to get a little bit cute, I think, in trying to loop Jordan Wara around. They ran the same alignment as they did when Ryan McMahon got that three, but just a really bad pass trying to get the ball into Malik Williams, and it's going to turn into perhaps a three-point play from Duke. Just a terrific job by Trey Jones to get it down floor quickly, but just poor execution by Louisville and out of bounds under. You know, you want to get a layup, not give up one. And that's what happened. And for Trey Jones, who didn't score in the first half, now has 12 in the second half. Well, that was a huge play for Duke to get that turnover and capitalize on the other end. Johnson driving again. Kicks it. Stolen by Goldwire. Scores over Sutton, who's playing with four fouls, and it's down to one. We have an injured Cardinal player at the other end of the court. It's David Johnson. What a turnaround. Two steals, two layups on the other end. A five-point swing. Looked like he was holding the back of his left leg. And that left arm is hanging limply as well. And boy, you just hate to see it. A guy who had shoulder surgery in the summer has come back. You can see him grabbing oh, his, his left wrist, wrist yeah. there on the replay. You just hate to see that. 
Boy, he has played so well. Oh, it's, and he's grabbing his shoulder now. Who knows what it is, but. Such a talented player who has had such a huge impact on this game and a couple of other recent games for Louisville, and you can see the anguish that he is feeling right now on the bench. You just hope it's not serious. God, you hate to see that. Such a great player. Sutton off balance, and he drew the foul before the shot. Louisville has got to get some movement. Yeah, he's Fred Hina, the trainer for Louisville, spent years with the New York Mets and Major League Baseball is going to take him back underneath. And remember, he had that shoulder that kept him out those four months. One and one for Sutton. Louisville has been driving in the last several possessions. They haven't moved the defense first. And there's got to be more movement. Now, Duke's pressure has been a big factor in that. And the lead back to three. Perry not in the game right now for Duke. He's got four. DeLaurier is in. DeLaurier set screens and roll hard to the basket. Good offensive rebounder as well. Stanley's been the go-to guy at the center of the floor for the Blue Devils. There's another ball screen, hard roll. Stanley drives, left hand, no. Two forty to go, Louisville with the ball and the lead here in Durham. Jack White right now guarding Jordan Warren. Warren's got to be active getting the ball. Going to have to set a ball screen. Warren's still with just six on the night. Got the switch. Now White on Kimball. Step back jumper. What a rebound by Samuel Williamson. Big play for the freshman. And another possession now for the Cardinals. Jordan Warren's got Trey Jones on. Let's see if he goes down into the post. They can isolate him. Staying out of the perimeter right now as the shot clock winds down. Not a factor in the play. Malik Williams misses the three. Ball to Duke. And Stanley just tapped it to himself. There were two Cardinals there, but he tapped it and was able to come away with possession. And Mike Krzyzewski will call a timeout with a minute 54 to go. Jordan Moore is just not active enough on the offensive end. He's got to move without the ball, be more of a threat. Frustrating game for Wara, but... He's been frustrated by some excellent defenders. David Johnson at least back out of the locker room with his teammates right now, out with an injury on what has been the best night for him in his Louisville season and career. He has been absolutely spectacular, making plays on both ends of the court off that horn set, just cutting off Jordan Warren, getting the ball, catch and shoot. His defense has been excellent, great passing. He's got a, a next level vision as a freshman. And then after hitting the deck here, we're not sure exactly what it was. It looked like a, a shoulder, but he's holding an arm and just not sure what it is. You certainly hope it's not that shoulder. Let's go down to Holly, who may have some info. Well, guys, you might remember Chris Mack told us at the half that it was a torn labrum that he was out with. He had that shoulder surgery. That is his surgically repaired shoulder. You can see the scars on the back of it. He was complaining of pain on that left shoulder, so they're trying to make sure nothing happened there. He's just barely come back from that, so they are very concerned. On the bench right now as Louisville tries to hang on on the road here at Cameron. They're spreading the floor, going with a high ball screen. Basically playing five out. And Williams down with the rebound after the miss by Jones. Disciplined defensive play by Malik Williams. Got switched off on Trey Jones. Went up straight and was able to get the ball out of the air instead of bringing his arm down while Trey Jones still had the ball in his hands. And Vernon Perry Jr., Jay, remains on the bench right now here in the last couple of minutes. Well, he'd be attacked. Sutton, no. Long rebound to Jones. And Sutton settled there. Hurts. White, good close out there by Williams. Matthew Hurts got fresh Kimball on his postman. That's it at the elbow. 
Shot clock at 10. With Jones. Loose ball down to the Cardinals. War has got it. We've got 48 seconds left. Louisville up by three. War is surrounded, and a timeout is called. Really difficult shot by Trey Jones. Right now for Louisville, it's about getting the ball inbounds and getting a good shot or getting fouled. Remember the last few possessions where they had out of bounds underneath, they threw the ball away, and that led to a three-point play on the other end for Duke. And then followed that up with another turnover, but they've been able to you know, at least maintain this one possession lead. Last win against a top three ranked team on the road for the Cardinals came 10 seasons ago. They're trying to beat Duke here with Cameron up by three, 43.5 seconds to go. Doing it without an injured David Johnson and with Jordan Wara having a subpar game. 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Duke is going to go after the ball. They're going to go after a steal. That was Louisville's last time out. Really didn't have a choice. I mean, Jordan Moore was about to get tied up. And to Williamson, the freshman, guarded by Goldwire. They want to get it to the hands of Kimball, and they do. And again, Wara on the perimeter, Stanley guarding him. Hurt is on Sutton. Kimball's in trouble. White takes it away. A poor possession by Louisville. Stanley, this would tie well short. Didn't need it. You could have taken that all the way to the rim, get the bucket. And now forced to give a foul. It'll become a free throw shooting contest right now for the Cardinals. Surprised on that last Louisville possession that they didn't go to Dwayne Sutton. He had the best matchup. Malik Williams, who is a good shooter. He's only a 63% free throw shooter, but he's got a very good shooting touch. And he made that three to end the first half. One for two tonight. This is one and one. The 18 foul committed by Duke. And this is to make it a two possession game. That is quite a response to step up in this environment, knock that free throw down. Yeah. Uh, two big free throws for the junior. Even though it's five, Duke does not need a three. Take it to the rim. Jones turned it over. Ahead of the pack is Williams. And Louisville's going to win it here at Cameron. What an answer by Louisville. Duke came out hard defensively in the second half, took the lead, and Louisville answered it. Just a tremendous job by the Cardinals, and what a great play by Malik Williams to knock those free throws down and come back and seal this thing with a two-handed dunk. Going is their jubilation on the bench to our far right right now for the Cardinals who are going to move this six and one in league play Duke will lose its second game in a row and fall a game behind both the Cardinals and the Florida State Seminoles who won at Miami in overtime earlier today. And also losing a home game is how difficult it is to win on the road that puts even more pressure on you to protect your home court. Boy, and how good does this have to feel for Chris Mack and for the Cardinals who were a part of that game last year up in Louisville when Duke came back from 23 down with 9.55 to go to win it. This is just a big program win for Chris Mack and Louisville. I mean, there have been some questions of late about just how good Louisville is this year. I mean, they got pummeled against Florida State. They lost in Rupp Arena to Kentucky. They lost to Texas Tech in the Garden. But they answered big time in this one on the road at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Baker with a three in the final second. 
but it'll be the Louisville Cardinals going out of here happy. A significant road win for the Cardinals here. But Cameron, they beat Duke 79 to 73. It's six losses this week by top five ranked teams. Two by Duke, two by Auburn, two by Butler. The first time in 26 seasons that there have been six losses by top five ranked teams in a single week. Welcome to college basketball here in 2019-20, where nothing can be taken for granted. Yeah, this roller coaster isn't going to stop, but a tremendous performance when Jordan Wara didn't have his best and was essentially taken out of the game from a scoring perspective. David Johnson stepped forward. You just hope he's going to be healthy going forward, worried about him and the shoulder. Asha Stanley led the way for Duke with 24, but a great team effort by the Cardinals. It's going to be a happy flight back to Louisville after they beat Duke. Favorite Cameron here tonight. Time now, UFC action to Las Vegas.